Hello guys, this video is for ZBrush users who are just starting to do some hard surface design in ZBrush. And while ZBrush is a good program, I think that Plasticity can offer you some really good features with hard surface modeling as well. And I think in many aspects, it's much easier to do hard surface design in Plasticity than it is in ZBrush. So I'm not here to insult ZBrush or anything, but I just wanna, you know, ZBrush takes a long time to get good because you have to do a lot of H polish. There's always gonna be issues of like a, rough surfaces, and of course it's millions of polygons if you want to export that. But with plasticity things are very nice and clean here. And you can very easily, if there's a feature you don't like, you can just hold down Alt to select this, just delete that. Just select this, just X to delete that. So it's very flexible in that regard. So although I do use ZBrush for of course organic characters as well as um, blocking out my designs, I do prefer to go here into plasticity and just create massive amounts of detail very quickly, easily, and effortlessly. And I think much easier and faster than you could do in ZBrush, although ZBrush is still a fantastic program. So here is this uh, mech head design by uh, a fantastic artist named Chi Veng. And I was just trying to do something similar here in plasticity. I wasn't focusing too much on, you know, amazing design. I was just focusing on trying to pump in as much detail as possible and just see how I could approximate this kind of design here or the types of details you can find here. And I think I've gotten pretty close right here. So let me give you a few ways you could do these types of designs. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, press H. Instead of thing, I'm going to go ahead and press H to hide that. All right, I'll go ahead and just start with a a sphere right here all right and so let me just actually move that lower just to make sure okay there we go it's it's low enough all right so if you want to get some sort of uh first of all i would just press uh, alt x and y to split the snap all right i'll go into let's say the front viewport and i'll press shift a to create a line and let's say you want to go ahead and start splitting things up and you want to have kind of you have to split up into two sections and you have this dark um, border object as well, this connecting object. So I'll go ahead and hold down control and that will allow me to, you can also hold down shift to snap it to nine degrees. All right, and I can hold down control and begin to move this out here. All right, that gives me that. I can then select this, press C and select that line. All right, so that gives me this. I'm going to go ahead and press M and give this a darker color just so we can differentiate. All right, so now we've got that. All right, so next I want to have a little darker area right here, at the connecting point. So in order to get that, I can go ahead and select these edges, for example. And actually beforehand, guys, what I can do is uh, I'm going to press Ctrl Z. What I could do is I could actually, uh, before cutting, I could smooth this out. So I'll select this and I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a fill up right there. All right. Once again, I'll make this darker. All right. And then I can select this here and I can actually hold down Alt and select this to loop this and uh, same for right here. All right, now I can press P with the pipe tool and increase the section size, for example, to get that. All right, after doing that, I'll press Shift Q to make it slice and I'll right click to confirm that. I can now select this, for example, and delete that. And as you can see, I now have this detail running along here and give us a darker color. So just by using things like the pipe tool in creative ways, you can get that kind of detail happening right there. All right, next, there's a little piece right here that we're gonna insert. So now I'm gonna see how I can do that. What I can do, for example, is to go here at an angle and uh, create a line right here, for example, and then I can cut that away like so and delete that. As you can see, I now have a little place here to insert that. And I can, for example, fill out that or chamfer that like so. All right, but I can go ahead and insert a cylinder or box in there. And now I can kind of uh, rotate, rotate that in there. It's also worth knowing that plasticity has a lot of the same hotkeys as Blender. So if you're used to working with Blender, you will have no trouble fitting in here as well. All right, so I've kind of fit the cylinder in here. 
And obviously when you're doing this for real, you can spend more time fine tuning everything here. I'm just giving you a very quick example. And we can very easily just select the surface and just press D to make that smaller or larger. All right, so just like that, we now have this object inside of here. All right. We can also do things like uh, when we chamfer, we can go ahead and press L to add a limit point, and then press L again and select, for example, right here. All right, now I can left click on these to invert them. And so now we only have a chamfer happening right here, for example. And we can then select that chamfered face and move it further. We can then, for example, select this R for rotate V to set up a custom pivot. Select this edge and then we can kind of rotate it around that pivot point like so. And we can do the same for this right here. R, V, select that, Z, and then uh, kind of fine tune it here. And there we go. Right, and we can easily use the same surface that we got right here. So when we press Shift A to create line, we can hold down Shift to constrain to like this face right here. And so now it's on that face. So as we create something here, for example, all right, you can see it was perfectly aligned with that face right there because we held down Shift. So I think that's a really cool feature of plasticity is just being able to do that. All right, so this could be some sort of a latch, for example. All right. And then, so to cut things, we can't just select polygons. We need to go ahead and, for example, press Shift A and then uh, cut right there. Now we will select this, we'll press Shift I and we'll select the surface. We would just imprint to this on the surface, which means now we can actually extrude that and have a little separation right there. Whereas normally it would just, uh, because it's one surface, it would just extrude both of them. Right, another cool feature of plasticity is that we can press uh, Alt X for mirror and select this face right here and get that effect happening right there. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller here. All right, so we've got this right here. So just like that, we get this latch happening on this object. Maybe give this a different color to differentiate it. There we go. So as you can see guys, it's just very easy to, to create uh, details on the surface. But let's say we want this latch to fit in here better. So I'll select this and I'll press C and then select this surface. It's going to go ahead and cut all the way through using that plane. I'll press C, select that right there. All right. And I'll also do the same for this object right here. All right, so in order to select that, I'll go ahead and press C, and now I'll select from the left to select that. You can see what's happened now is that this whole section, this whole chunk, is has been cut out, which means I can now delete this chunk. And as you can see, now I have a nice space for this latchet, whatever it is. And I can press Q2 and bring them back together, and now I can create this really nice space. And it's going to be perfectly even, because it's literally using the faces right here to cut that infinitely. So... What follows up is just quickly using fillet to get nice details. Now I can go in here, for example, and fillet this. And we're now getting that right there. And we can just fill it all day. A very powerful fillet system here. We can press, uh, we can quickly insert uh, spheres, bo boxes, and cylinders to quickly create details here as well. We can press Shift Q for that. If that gives, if Shift Q gives you problems, what you can do is just press V to make it a new object. And maybe you may need to manually uh, move things out a little bit here. All right. So I'll select this and then the cylinders, Q, Shift Q. And so I can now delete these outer portions. And so now we have this detail, but we also have this space for it as well which means now we can easily select them and give them a different color. 
and then we can select uh, these edges and we can uh, chamfer that for example. All right. So we can also easily, you know, insert boxes onto here. And so we can then select the faces here and we can just press D to move it, to make it larger. We can, of course, easily select this and delete it. We can also rotate it to have it match something. We can make it go deeper in here and we can once again select this R, V and rotate this to get some more slick extrusions going on here. And you can have fun filleting in different orders to get different results. Once again, quickly, for example, create a cylinder here and cut that away right there. All right. To have this stand out a little bit more, you can select this and then give this a fillet or a chamfer and then this detail will be more noticeable. There we go. Now it's going to catch more highlights. All right. As you can see guys, it's very fun and easy just to layer things on here. Now we can select all this and just the Alt X, Y, and we can uh, unit together if we need to. So just like that guys, you can really get fast details happening here.